Let's talk about the golden ratio. Two sides are said to be in golden ratio if the ratio from A to B is equal to the ratio of A plus B to A, but you knew that already. Getting the value of the golden ratio is pretty easy. You can just use this information to solve for it. So I'll go ahead and let someone else take that part but of this video for For the sake of being formal and rigorous, we'll go through the derivations. So if we take the ratio of A and B, that should be equal to A plus B over A. Now if we multiply both sides by A and B, we get that A squared is equal to AB plus B squared. And now we're going to choose, choose that b is equal to 1, and then this simplifies and we get a squared is equal to a plus 1. Wait, 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 okay, that makes absolutely no sense. How can we just decide that b is equal to 1? You can't do that. You can't just make an unfounded assumption like saying a b is equal to 1. If we're looking for the value of a over b, we can't decide what part of it is makes absolutely no sense. Okay, so you know if you want something done, you have to do it yourself. So let's just go ahead and derive the value of the golden ratio on our own without making any of these crazy nonsense assumptions that are totally unfounded and not correct. All right, let's do this the correct way without making any crazy unfounded assumptions. All right, so from the diagram, we can conclude that A over B equals a plus b over a okay so far so good now we can multiply both sides by a cancels here we have a squared here and multiply both sides by b so we have a b plus b squared here okay so far so good now let's see we can take everything and move it to one side so that we get a squared minus ab minus b squared equals zero. Okay. Well, the problem is that there are two unknowns and we can't just decide that b is equal to one. It's a travesty. So what can we do? Okay, well, I guess we could rearrange this so that it looks like a quadratic in A over B. I mean, that's what we want to find, right? A over B. So, instead of A squared, let's write A over B squared times something to account for that. So we had A squared before, now we have A squared over B squared, so we need to multiply by B squared. And then these, these are the same, right? Yeah. And then we will do the same thing for the second term. We will do A over B. Okay, but I have a times b, so I need to multiply by b squared again to account for that, right? b squared over b, one of them cancel, we get ab. Good. And we'll leave this one alone, the b squared can stay. Okay, hmm. Now I definitely don't see anything we could do here. There's no way to simplify this or make it look any better at all. So I guess since it's a quadratic with a variable a over b, I can apply the quadratic formula. Sure. So let's see. So a over b is going to be b squared. Of course the b squared or the abc of the quadratic formula is not the a's and b's here, right? So b squared is the middle term squared. So that's negative b squared squared so we get oh it's wait quadratic formula negative b so negative b in this case is going to be negative negative b squared which is b squared okay we're good plus or minus the square root of b squared which is negative b squared squared which is b to the fourth minus four times a a is the leading coefficient which is b squared times c which is negative b squared. Okay, and over 2a, and that's 2b squared. Okay. Ah, but, but, oh, okay. So this, negative 4b squared times negative b squared, that's, that's plus 4b to the fourth. So we could write this as b squared plus or minus 
the square root of b to the fourth plus four b to the fourth, which is five b to the fourth over two b squared. Okay, okay. And, and the square root of five b to the fourth could be written as the square root of five times the square root of b to the fourth, which is b squared. Ah, okay. And now every term has a b squared in it, so we can cancel. We get one plus or minus the square root of five over two. And that is how you derive the golden ratio without cheating and letting b be whatever the hell you want. So now you've seen the one true way to derive the golden ratio. We didn't make any unnecessary or unfounded assumptions. We just went with the purest method. So that's gonna do it for this video. I think this might be the world's first correct derivation of the golden ratio. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.